Today I'm working on a high impedance probe, basically an active probe. I want it to be a simple one. Uh, Mr. Carlson talks about one of these a few years ago. Uh, his is a little more complicated than mine. I think he was looking for one that he could use on a spectrum analyzer so that he could probe uh, radio circuits to adjust IF transformers and so on. And I think he was looking for a 45 megahertz upper uh, frequency, at least I think that's where he wound up was in the 45 to 50 megahertz range. I was hoping to get a little better than that. I'm not too concerned about gain, but I am concerned about uh, bandwidth. I would like something that goes uh, a little above 100 megahertz so that it can be used in the front end of an FM uh, radio. So basically what you see on the screen is a, a waveform, a 100 megahertz waveform. Now it doesn't show it over here as uh, 100, but I'll show you in a minute. That's the output of my HP synthesizer and it is 100 megahertz. Uh, the reason it doesn't show 100 here is because all this noise messes up the counter. The, uh, and the reason for the noise is because I'm building this right now on a breadboard. And I'm pretty confident that if I can make this work on a breadboard, then if I put it down in a, on a nice uh, substrate with a nice ground plane and shield it, uh, I think this will work even better. So what you have at the top is the input to the circuit, which is a 100 megahertz sine wave uh, under the noise. And on the uh, bottom is channel 2 is the output of the circuit. So what big deal? Why not just connect the probe to the same point? Well, the difference is this uh, waveform is at a meg ohm. In other words, the input impedance of this device is a meg ohm. And I did that to match a scope probe. The output, this signal, which, by the way, you may notice they're both 20 millivolts per division. This signal, which is only slightly smaller than that signal, the, uh, maybe if I move it up you can see that. By the way, you see when, I, when I'm moving it the trigger is better, but I think you can tell there's a slight phase shift and the the, the yellow trace is slightly bigger than the blue trace. But anyway, the idea is that I'm getting a, basically a gain of 1 at 100 megahertz with a 1 meg ohm input impedance and a 50 ohm output impedance. And of course the 50 ohms is so it'll match a spectrum analyzer. So let's take a look at the, uh, the breadboard. down there. And now let's switch over and take a look at the circuit that I'm using. Okay, here is the circuit. This is a J310 uh, junction field effect transistor, a 1 meg resistor, a 0.47 microfarad input capacitor and the reason for that is I'd like the uh, lower frequency limits to be down uh, in the hundreds of kilohertz. It doesn't have to go down to uh, audio frequencies but I would like it uh, good enough to show the IF frequency of say a 455 kilohertz superhead. The, uh, the JFET has a 100 ohm resistor in its uh, source the drain is connected to plus V, which in this case is 9 volts. I chose 9 volts so I can run it off a 9 volt battery. Then the uh, source is connected to the gate of this transistor, which is a 3904, 2N3904. And the, input, the output is a 47 ohm resistor, and I haven't shown it here, but there's a capacitor here of 0.47 also which, uh, and this one wouldn't need to be that low uh, 
I mean, that big because this is a very low resistance. But uh, nonetheless, I used 0.47 throughout even the bypass capacitor for the uh, uh, VDD or the drain voltage is uh, a 0.47. So basically a mega ohm of input impedance and a 47 ohm uh, output impedance. You might ask, well, how did I pick the 100 ohm resistor? Well, what you, this resistor is chosen to, uh, to make the collector current in this transistor near its highest gain point or its highest gain bandwidth product. Like I say, I would like to have uh, at least 100 megahertz uh, gain of a fairly flat out to 100 megahertz or so. And so what I did is I chose this resistor so that it puts about 1.5 uh, volts on the, on the uh, base of the 3904. If you disconnect the 3904, because it draws so little uh, base current, if you disconnect it and adjust this resistor until you get about 1.5 volts or 1.3 volts here, then by the time you take the base to emitter drop into account, which is around 6 tenths of a volt, you wind up with around half a volt across 47 ohms, which is around 10 milliamps. So. Uh, and that is sort of the optimum operating point for a 3904. So, well, the next step is I'm going to build it into a little project box with some BNC connectors and a nice uh, ground plane and some shielding and so on. And when I do that, I'll finish up this video and show you how that works. I'm starting to construct the shielded box that I want to put this in. The You can probably see in there, there are a couple of BNC connectors. There's the front side and part of the glare uh, and a, an on-off switch. And then I've wired a 9-volt uh, battery connector to the on-off switch. And you may notice there are a couple of little tabs down here at the base those are to hold a board like that, the purpose of which is to provide a ground plane. And I'm just going to build this using what's called the dead bug technique. In other words, we'll use this as ground and the components will simply be connected in space between these. That allows me to minimize the uh, the lead length, and since I want high frequency response to be as good as possible, I put both of the BNCs on the same end of the box so that the distance between them would be short. If I'd have put one on this end of the box and the other one on that end, then all of the connections would have to go all the way across the box, uh, which of course uh, degrades the high frequency performance. So the uh, this is kind of an intermediate step. And one more thing I did want to mention. In a few subsequent experiments, I decided to insert a 100 ohm resistor between the source of the JFET and the base of the 3904. And the reason for that is if you uh, are familiar with emitter followers, you know that if you use a high gain, high frequency transistor here, and a 3904, I think, uh, has a 300 megahertz uh, gain bandwidth product, they often will oscillate somewhere around 200 to 250 megahertz unless you put in this little resistor called a base stopper. Now, my particular design is not oscillating. But if I put it in a box, it depends on lead length and other things. And this is basically intended to stop any parasitic oscillation that might occur as a result of feedback through this, uh, this amplifier, the 3904. Okay, so let's move on. Now I have uh, assembled the same circuit on a piece of printed circuit board here. 
and installed it in this box. I'll show you a little more of the construction here in a second, a little bit of a close-up. But basically the idea is that I wanted this to be as self-contained as possible and hopefully as shielded as I could be. Uh, now, this, <laughs> this is not my best construction project ever. Uh, I think it's pretty good, but I don't think, uh, well, <laughs> well, let's just say that my hands have been steadier in the past and my eyesight better, but I can see uh, well enough to, to know that this will, uh, this is reasonably good assembly technique. If you're not familiar with the technique that I'm using here, it's called island construction. Uh, I'll, I'll point out a couple of videos uh, in just a minute that you might want to go look at. But this is a very good technique for uh, high frequency circuits, that is for RF and, and so on. So uh, this BNC is the output, this BNC is the input, and I'm using a 200 megahertz uh, scope uh, probe for the input. And you may remember that I'm looking for a good response out to 100 megahertz or so. So now the, uh, and, and this is connected to the spectrum analyzer, the scope probe is connected to the, uh, to, to the output of the generator. You see it over there. Now up here, pardon the, is the spectrum analyzer and I'm now going to turn on the RF signal and you see that it seems to be doing a pretty good job of this is a 100 megahertz signal uh, now there is noise uh, as you would expect down around minus uh, well this is minus 55 dB this this line here so from about minus 55 dB on down to around minus 61 dB, there is noise. If this looks noisier than normal, it's because I'm using only 2 volt, uh, 2 dB per, uh, or 3 dB per division instead of the normal 10 dB per division. Okay, uh, now let me show you the, uh, so, so at any rate, the, uh, the, box does seem to work and by the way when I turn the power off you see the signal does go away and now I'll turn the power back on and turn on the uh, turn off the generator and you see it also goes away so uh, as you can see the uh, the noise is basically just the noise of the uh, spectrum analyzer so now let's take a quick look at the construction and uh, a few tips on that and then I'll try to wrap up this, uh, this video. So let me give you a little better idea of what we're doing here. You'll notice that the, there are some uh, solder blobs, if you will, on the printed circuit board down here. Those are soldered to the tabs of these BNC connectors. So there's one on this side and one on that side. That's to give a good ground plane from the barrel of the BNC to this, to this uh, here, uh, this PCB board. And then the ground of the, or the negative lead of the 9 volt battery is here, and the switched lead is the red lead you see there. The, uh, and the, the two devices you see here and here are the JFAT and the 2N3904. Uh, I'm using capacitive coupling for the output and capacitive coupling for the input. And those leads could be a little bit shorter, but for what I'm going to do, it's, uh, I think it's, uh, it's going to be fine. So if you're not familiar with this island technique, let me uh, show you a couple of videos you might want to go look at. The first video you might want to look at is uh, number 122 by W2AEW, uh, Allen, a, a, a Tektronics uh, engineer, does these videos. And if you haven't seen his channel, I recommend it. Uh, the, uh, in this video, he talks about island construction. 
and the types of techniques that he's talking about, he's showing a variety of prototyping methods, but among them is what's called island. Now what an island means is you cut a little, a little uh, circle on the printed circuit board to free the area up from the surrounding ground and then you use that to solder to. It's a good technique for RF. Here is one that I did, my number 257, and in I've stopped it at the point where I'm showing the, the little island cutter. What this is is actually a jewel cutter that you can buy. If you watch this uh, video, you'll uh, it'll explain where you can buy these things. But basically this is mounted in a uh, drill that's that's part of a drill press and then you place the uh, the board underneath and it drills the little islands using this. So that's the technique I used in this uh, in this project. I've now closed up the box partly to see if that changes the noise level any so let's go up to the uh, spectrum analyzer and see. Here we are. Come in. It has not really changed the. Uh, you may remember uh, this. It was. This is minus 53 and this is minus 59 and the noise is still in between the two. I'm now going to turn on the power. And you notice there's no power is now on, no appreciable difference. Turn on the RF signal, turn it back off. It does not appear to have uh, changed the noise level at all. So as I suspected, what we're reading there is the noise level of the spectrum analyzer. But at any rate, uh, this is uh, really, I would consider it kind of a kludge uh, project because I put it together mainly so that I can use an oscilloscope probe to probe high impedance circuits, particularly RF circuits, without uh, a severe mismatch to a spectrum analyzer. So I hope this will be useful in the future but uh, right now it was mainly done to see whether I could build a working circuit using the island technique and, and whether it, the, the whole concept of impedance transformation using a JFET to transform a 2 meg ohm uh, scope probe uh, down to a 50 ohm spectrum analyzer and it, it does appear to uh, to work. Now, if you look on the internet, you'll find that there are other active probes very similar to this one or, or otherwise. Not quite as complicated as the one that Mr. Carlson did, but basically the same idea, either using a JFET or a MOSFET. So I hope you've enjoyed this. If you uh, uh, have any questions, put them in the comments. I I think I might use this in a future video to do some probing in some RF uh, uh, circuitry, but at this time I'm going to call this a, a wrap and tell you that uh, you can look forward to some more videos, but, uh, but probably not on this subject for a while. So please have a nice day.